Hello, this is Glenn Kessler here at the Compass Atelier for our first of 2021 Mixing Mondays. I'm very much looking forward to running these regular Monday video sessions on Facebook Live on the Painter's Compass Color Wheel Facebook page. Uh, this gives us an opportunity to learn a little bit more about color theory and play with the Painter's Compass Color Wheel. Uh, this is going to be, I think, a very educational series that uh, we're going to run. I'll run it as long as there remains interest. And, um, you know, certainly looking forward to uh, mixing up some different colors, uh, training folks on how to use our Painter's Compass color wheel, which, uh, you know, I'm very pleased uh, that so many of our students who studied here at the Compass Atelier have found an absolutely indispensable piece of technology gives us the option of uh, mixing colors with absolute certainty about what's going to happen uh, and as we get to know it better allows us to access some unexpected mixtures to produce some pretty wild uh, you know color mixing opportunities uh, limited palette exercises great harmonization between all the colors that we're working with on a palette. So uh, again, if you're just joining, I'm Glenn Kessler. I'm here at the Compass Atelier, our studio in Rockville, Maryland, where we run uh, classes. We're doing most of our classes virtually now, but hope to uh, get classes started again when uh, vaccines start to go around and public sentiment dictates. But I want to um, get started with our Monday, um, our Mixing Monday uh, exercise for today. We're going to be working today on uh, taking orange and lowering its saturation with its complementary color, blue. And the specific pigments we're going to be working with today are cadmium orange and ultramarine blue. Now I'll be adding just a little bit of white uh, to the ultramarine blue to lighten it up a bit so we can see what the uh, what the results are going to be. But I think this is going to be a very enjoyable uh, exercise. And uh, if you're just joining us, please feel free to say hello or ask a question, make any comments down below, just down at the bottom of the screen. Also, if you're just joining us um, and we're starting to get the word out about these, this is our first one of the of the year. Um, go ahead and share. Uh, it should be easy enough down at the bottom. Share with your Facebook friends. Uh, we might have some people who want to kind of join us. I won't do this announcement at the beginning of each of the Mixing Mondays, but uh, as we're getting going here in January, I think that would be great to help get the word out. I see we've got seven uh, people watching. That's excellent. So uh, hopefully we can keep more folks uh, in, in entertained and educated through this exercise. So I think we're going to go ahead and get started with our mix. I'm going to flip you guys around, drop you down to my palette, and we'll get started on our mix. As I mentioned before, we're going to be working with orange and blue, so we'll get started just by squeezing out a little bit of that orange. And I want to see what it looks like. So let's go ahead and, and push it around just a little bit. It's nice and vibrant, very intense pigment. I'm actually gonna put a little more out so we can really play here. Why not? So it's a beautiful, rich and vibrant orange color. It is at what we would call on the uh, color wheel, maximum saturation. It is in the intense or outer band of the color wheel. We place it in between orange and yellow orange. In fact, right on the line between orange and yellow orange because this particular pigment does have not a true orange uh, kind of a kind of a quality to it, but a little more yellow. There are other brands that have different uh, different qualities. Some that that skew a little more orange. Some that even skew a little more yellow. Uh, this is Gamblin, and this one happens to be slightly more yellow. That's not a fault. That's just the truth of where that pigment exists, and it will help us to move to our next step. Move that over a little bit. On the other side, we're going to be using ultramarine blue. Now, ultramarine blue. If you can see, I'll pull this a little closer. Ultramarine blue is a spectrum blue. It is right in the dead center of the blue hue, but it is not at max saturation. Ultramarine blue has just a slightly lower saturation, so we don't let it 
push all the way out to the extreme, as for example, phthalo blue is. That's a much more intense color. So ultramarine blue is gonna start off right here. Well, what happens when we mix together those two colors? If we take our wet erase marker and connect these two lines, we'll see what happens. A line represents, a line between two pigments rec represents the number of possible mixtures that could occur, that infinite number of mixtures that could occur between that, um, those two pigments. So when you mix blue with orange, what we're going to see is we're going to see it get a little browner, then it'll pass through a gray stage. And because of the slight bit of yellowness with this cadmium orange, it's actually gonna kick slightly to, you see, the green side of the color wheel. It won't be a true neutral. Uh, true neutral gray. If we keep adding more blue, eventually we'll pop out the blue side of the um, of the color wheel. But uh, just for today, I'm going to try to lock us into the orange side, and we can watch as this changes. Now, uh, that ultramarine blue is a beautiful color, but it's a little dark uh, to see. So I'm going to add just a bit of white into there so that we can see what we're working with. Again, if you guys have any questions, do feel free to ask in the comments down below. Let me just grab some of that. And so you can see the qualities of that ultramarine blue. It's, uh, again, it's pretty intense. That's why it's out in the intense band, but it's not pegged all the way to the outer rim of the color wheel, just in a little bit. I think you can start to see that, that it's not quite as intense as its color is, uh, as the orange is over there. All right, so let's take a little bit of that blue, and I'll, we'll just start with a very little bit, a little bit of that blue, and we're gonna mix that into the orange. This is an exercise where I wanna just show us what orange looks like. I'll leave some of that off to the side for comparison, and as we mix in, a little bit of that blue, what we're gonna see is that we're starting to lose saturation. Now, it does appear to get darker. Darker is a measure of value, and value is important, of course, to know as a, as a painter. But we're also, uh, and maybe more interested, in how these complementary colors function in their saturation. So at this point, we will have ostensibly moved from this maximum saturation down to, I, I think we're probably still in the intense, but maybe we're right on the line between intense and medium. So intense is kind of the outer band, intense, 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 medium being that next band in, and then subtle or subdued, and then finally neutral exists all the way in the middle. Uh, all of that information is, of course, on the back of the wheel and at the painter's compass dot com website where we've got even more instructional videos on how the wheel works. So by adding a little bit of blue, you can see we're lowering the saturation. What happens if we add a little more blue? We're going to continue to drop that saturation. It's going to pass through a brown stage. This is a great way to take high intensity pigments that you may have purchased at the store and get them to look more like realistic colors that you could find in the real world. So you, can, you don't have to be intimidated by an intense orange like cadmium orange. And for example, by burnt sienna, burnt sienna would be quite redundant as we could build that color out of orange and blue. We'd need a little red to get it exactly in that um, burnt sienna profile. But there we go, we can see it really browning up. The, only color we've added so far is the blue, the complement. And so far, it is indeed tracking along exactly as we expect it to. It's almost matching the color of our medium saturation pigment. So we see it's shifting into that lower saturation. Let's add a little bit more. And what we see as we keep adding it is that it's getting browner and browner, grayer and grayer. Until finally, we're gonna reach a neutral gray. Let's go ahead and keep adding. I'll just take a little bit more of that until we reach a kind of a neutral gray. Now, if this ultramarine blue and cadmium orange was an exact complement if they were exactly across the color wheel from one another. Mixing not exactly equal parts by volume, but uh, more or less equal parts by strength, what we would end up with 
was a completely neutral value gray. That's not going to happen for us here. And why? Because of the yellowness of the hue of our original pigment, the cadmium orange. So proper placement of the original dots, uh, as we reference them on the, on the color wheel, is important to know where your pigments live. Cadmium orange lives here at what we might call like three o'clock exactly there. Not a true spectrum orange, not in the center, but just a little yellower. And that's causing this color to ever so subtly pick up what color hue. What color are we seeing here? Green. It's passing through that kind of yellow-green stage right now, which we would absolutely expect based on this line, which shows us how the saturations work, but also how hue shifts work. If we continue to add more and more blue into here, we're going to really see that color push on. And it's getting a little dark. I'm just going to add a touch more white so that we can see it, just so you get a pretty good sense of what we're, what we're doing here on the video. And look at that, it's almost to a completely neutral gray, but it does have just that faint color signature of a kind of a yellow green. Let me see if I can get the camera to focus on that. That's a beautiful color, actually. Love to find that color out in nature and know that I could mix it in such a simple formula as cadmium orange, ultramarine blue. And of course, we've got just a little bit of white, which is probably helping to neutralize that a bit further. Uh, let me show you, we actually do have titanium white placed on the wheel. It's very neutral, of course, so it's going to be uh, towards the middle, but uh, this is where we find the titanium white, right in there. So, yeah, if we have mixed that color, as we suspect, to, you know, maybe right around there, and then we add some titanium white to it, it is going to pull that color up in this direction. So it's possible that the hue could change. Now we're not gonna add nearly enough white to pull it all the way over to white. That would be pure white. Uh, but you do notice that it gets a little closer to the neutral. And if we had mixed it back here, that actually would have been even more helpful to get it to that neutral. So you see how we can control the mixture based on what pigments we add. It's a very simple operation. This color wheel is remarkably simple initially to learn, but then as you work with it, the longer you work with it, it begins to open up all kinds of incredible secrets. And I think this is probably the first one uh, that, that I wanna kind of mention here, and, and we'll wrap up our video, that two complementary colors, cadmium orange and ultramarine blue, if they were true complements, would have passed through a neutral gray. But because cadmium orange, as a pigment, this is Gamblin's cadmium orange pigment, nothing wrong with it, it's just where that color lies on the, on the wheel. Because it's ever so slightly more yellow, when you mix the ultramarine blue with it, it passes through a slightly greener stage. And that's where we have found ourselves at this point. As we shifted that, you can see that green start to, start to show its face. And that's absolutely worth the price of admission. If we wanted to pull it back towards neutral, all we would need to do would be to add really any color that we have up on the warm spectrum, cadmium red being a candidate, alizarin crimson, quinacridone magenta, even dioxazine purple, and you could get it right back to full neutral. Uh, so that's how the painter's compass color wheel works. That's how uh, our mixing Mondays are going to work. And I really look forward to sharing with you guys. We can turn this around a little bit. Yep. I really look forward to sharing with you guys more mixing Mondays. Uh, if you want, you can set your calendar. We're going to start these right at 3.30. I teach until 3 o'clock, and I just need a few minutes to gather all my materials together. And we'll do this every Monday as long as there is interest. Hopefully, these will be of value. In the meantime, head over to thepainterscompass.com which is our brand new website for the Painter's Compass Color Wheel. Great videos, instructional videos there, helpful hints, uh, tricks and tools, and we're just gonna keep flooding that page with more and more information. Thank you guys for joining me, and if you're just catching us right now, remember that you can watch this video uh, posted on the Painter's Compass Color Wheel Facebook page about a minute after we wrap up here. Uh, we'll post it there. Take care, happy mixing, happy painting. From Glenn Kessler at the Compass Atelier, take care.